But, uh, um, yeah, I guess without further ado, let's just head into the next species today, shall we? I should even quickly pop over here. Let's change the name of the stream here because up next is going to be Alan Tongas. So originally we were going through this list just top to bottom, left to right, and um, we, it would seem, are done with a simple species finishing null, but due to the version change in the midst of our, our journeys here, halflings left the simple category and Palantongas took their place way up here, so we haven't had the opportunity yet to try out these bad boys. I have, haven't actually played a whole lot with Palantongas myself. They have a really fun roll um, ability. Gosh, tiny fly, get out of here. <laughs> A uh, really fun roll ability that I'm excited to try and work out. It's not something I'm going to use too, too often just because approaching enemies quickly isn't always the best uh, goal to have in mind in a, such a positionally based game. But it definitely helps you cross the distance to certain maybe like spellcasters, summoners. I'm sure there's an edge case or, or two in there. Um, and then besides that, let's quickly bring up a quick list of all of their... Uh, their attributes here because I remember that they have scales but I don't remember the exact stats so I'll give a quick little overview here they have rugged brown scales so they get a bonus to their armor class which is nice as well as extra max health so a bit of a tankier species innately and that's kind of traded off by the fact that they're deformed so because they don't have a body shape that's you know consistent with most armor developers in this world apparently uh, they are only able to get half the base armor from AC, but they have their rugged brown scales and the ability to wear different types of barding in order to make up for that and give them a little bit more defensive capability. On top of that, they have acute vision, so we won't have to worry about seeing invisible again for a second run in a row, which is absolutely fantastic. It just takes a little bit off of us from having to come up with the correct resistances and all the different tools in our kit that we need to deal with later stages in the game. Instead, just have it innately. And then on top of that, they also have the armored tail. So I think that that's an auxiliary attack. I should actually just read it instead of guessing and supposing. And indeed, yes, an especially damaging tail slap auxiliary attack. So that's very nice to just get in a little bit of extra damage throughout the course of a fight. So with that kind of put out of the way here, let's, I guess, start heading in. And if there are any suggestions for either names for our lovely Palantonga friend here... Oh wait, damn it, what is... Actually, I do have a first name that I need to put in because I was just telling my wife yesterday about how Palantongas were up on the list here. And she had a suggestion, I think it was Dongus the Tongus. So Dongus the Palantongus is I think what we're going for round one here. But we do have to decide on our background and what we want to go in with. Fighter is definitely what uh, jumps out to me. <laughs> Centaur, I love that one too. Oh, so sad. Yeah, Palantongas, I believe, were the species that replaced centaurs back in, is that like 0.25, something like that? Definitely a few ver uh, versions past now. But I'm leaning towards Fighter. If anyone really wants to see a combination, speak now or forever hold your peace as I take a nice swig of my drink and then we'll pop in and see how she goes. I guess the other thing that I can do to just get a little bit of time in case people are filtering in with their own suggestions, let's take a look at these aptitudes, shall we? All of their defensive aptitudes are pretty bad, which makes sense. They're just not quite built for uh, the kind of classical defenses that most people have available to them here. On the other hand, invocations being a plus one does mean that we can definitely resort on a nice deity to get us through the early game difficulties. And then experience slightly slower, willpower, about average, maybe a bit on the low side. For all their fighting things, we have just solid zeros across the board pretty much. I guess the minus one is in what, pull arms? Oh, that's sad. No good with pull arms, but can basically choose to use any type of weapon that we come across. Ranged weapons not so proficient with, but you can always push past even negative aptitudes like this, if need be. And spellcasting, not as bad as I expected actually. I was kind of thinking of centaurs in my head, I think. 
So slightly better than I originally supposed, but still probably not something that I want to fully lean onto and just have to see what the run hands off to us. So Coville here with a suggestion for Monk. I'm very much happy with that. It is really nice to yeah get that early piety boost, especially with that positive aptitude to invocations. I feel like we can levy, levy both of those facts into, or factors rather, into something good here. So welcome to our unnamed Palantonga Monk. And what weapon do we want to use? I'm trying to think of what most of our wins have been. A lot of long blades. I don't know how many axes I've played with throughout the course of this series, and that's weird to me because axes used to be my go-to. Every fighter that I ever played would use hand axes. And I think that that might be a solid one on the Pelotongas. If we ever use our roll to engage into a situation, we kind of want that cleaving damage to uh, make up for the mistake of getting surrounded completely. So with that in mind, let's start off with axe, shall we? What is your name today? Centaur will be second on the list here, and in fact, I should write it down. Even though, of course, I'm sorry to say that it won't matter because there's no way we lose this run. You know us. But I do have to definitely go in first here with Donga the Palantonga. Let's go Dongus the Palantongus, because that's slightly more fun. And into another run we go. Oh me oh my, I should also fix my hair, I can feel just slight tickles on my forehead there. But we actually have skills again, would you look at that? Got so used to playing as a knoll that I just don't know what to do anymore with my life. Definitely want to change these onto manual, train up axes as soon as possible, we'll forego the defensive capabilities for the time being, especially that negative three aptitude on stealth. Not something I'm going to worry about in the early stages of the game here. And of course, as always, on the flip side of things here, we do want to pick up anything and everything all of the time here. Ooh, boomerangs. Gotta have those boomerangs. Auto pick up on all those. Perfect. And with that, we should be pretty much good to go here. The last thing that we will do is a quick dump of our file here as I quickly try and gain access to it. I wasn't actually expecting that null run to go quite so smoothly or to end quite so quickly, so I didn't have this all set up in advance, but I'm at least getting faster at accessing my morgue location here. Because we definitely want to steal the game seed from here. And it's the last chance for any of you watching now to steal the game seed from that previous null run in which we had just a plethora of consumables. I think that that might be a fun seed to uh, kind of practice and train getting through 15 room wins. But we'll now switch out the seed for Dongus's seed. And that is awesome. With that all out of the way, nothing left to do but to just get into it here. So let's do it. Apparently we come down to where just all the stores are closed. There used to be a thriving marketplace and economy at the top level of the dungeon here. All the adventurers constantly having to uh, resupply and whatnot. Such a shame, too bad, that it's no longer such a thing. Bedtime later all, thanks you so much for watching Wetworks. I appreciate having you around, and have a great night. Ooh, that giant, our giant, like, armadillo... Pangolin beast thing, just almost absolutely murdered by a Quokka, just nipping at our heels ferociously. Gotta be careful with those Quokkas, absolutely brutal. Also though, didn't actually end up checking out Roll in Charge at all. Rolls at a foe with a clatter of scales, then uncurls and strikes at them in melee with increased accuracy. The greater the distance of the roll, the more momentum will be added to the force of your strike. You roll with sufficient speed to dodge traps and harmful terrain along the way, but not at your destination. Ooh, good to know. Also very interesting, harmful terrain, that's wild. But it's nice that we don't have to worry about rolling charge getting us killed by like running into net traps, zot traps, alarm traps, all that kind of good old stuff. Also a couple of small things, or like hints here I believe. Clatter of scales, I'm guessing, means we can't get a backstab with a rolling charge, or at least is more unlikely to do so. So that's good to know. But perfect, let's open out every fight with a rolling charge then. If 
we're able to. I don't know what the overall distance we're able to roll is. I don't know if it's full screen. I guess it probably said in that, right? Oh no, it did not. So I'm not able to roll here, nor here, nor here. Now I can. So I think it's a limit of five squares, something like that. At least so it would seem. All right, don't guess see you and me. Let's do this. So we just rush our way into every encounter. I should be on the lookout for armor. I haven't been paying attention so far. Nothing yet. We do definitely want to get a little bit tougher at some stage here. Unlike the traditional monks of a lot of RPGs and D&D and whatnot, we don't actually gain any defensive capabilities by not wearing armor, so I'd like to remedy that situation as quickly as possible. Hello friends, I guess rolling charge is probably a good way of killing bats, hey? Get off of me? Get him, get him. Perfect, increased accuracy is nice. In general, I guess we can maybe try and Levy that against any high evasion enemies? Maybe just maybe? We'll have to see how things shake out. Okie dokie. Oh, I'm letting myself get completely surrounded. That's not fantastic. Kind of hope these pink potions are carrying potions, otherwise we might be in for a bit of a treat here. Um, hmm. I don't want there to be two adders next to us does look like up here to the left there's a an actual one by one corridor but we're gonna take some hits getting there and we're walking away from the stairs but i think we're already kind of screwed unless we make some changes so let's do so shall we oh my gosh is a bat gonna kill us <laughs> apparently bats and quokas the most dangerous beings on the entire or in the entire dungeon i should say but we can use rolling charge to back away from the adder and then rolling charge to slam into the adder. Oh gosh. Well, about to become lethally poisoned. Any day now. How much damage do you actually do? Up to five, so just literally lethal right now, eh? Never didn't have it though. Okay, so we could keep swinging, and there's a chance that it'll work, but we might just start dipping into our potion supply here, nice and early. See if it doesn't bring us out of this horrifying situation. It was curing. We're not out of it yet. I also don't know, I should have been paying attention to see if I took two damage over the course of that, because if not, it's a shame too bad that we used up a resource we didn't have to, but at the end of the day, we're alive, and that's all that really matters, right? So there we go. Let's reset to a different stair now that we've brought all the orcs. Coming that a ways. And of course, we immediately run into another adder. We're out of stairways, right? We are, because both these end up near the orcs. I'd rather fight orcs than an adder, I think. Hope I'm not horrifically wrong about this, but it seemed to be the better value call, at least in my head. Now, get out of here. Oh gosh, why did this one go so much worse? <laughs> There's a good representation on how that first fight should have gone. We have a nice save, definitely got a little bit lucky. Not even just with the curing potion there, but just in general not dying to the adders before we even had the opportunity. Pretty wild stuff. Oh my, why is this floor nothing but adders? Game, please, <laughs> stop. As a wise man once said, never didn't have it. I do have to give it to you there. Not wrong. Hey, you assume the null one? They did indeed. Null model, absolute killer. I think, Safed, you were the one who get, came up with the name too, right? Absolutely killed it. You knew exactly what we needed to get ourselves through that run. So it was fantastic to... Uh, to get that one in one one go for sure one go with caveats of course because there was that wednesday stream that we just don't talk about unfortunately a few nulls had to die but after that first try Ooh, plus four ring of evasion 
is a pretty solid thing. We want any of the uh, any and all defensive capabilities that we can early game here will be a huge deal. And now we found an early tower shield, which is normally way far out there in terms of when you're able to use one. As a giant species, we're able to have the lower skill requirements for shields, which means it's just 15, the usual skill level for a kite shield on this big old tower shield buddy. So I think that will make me slowly train shields in the background at least. Might not be something that we can immediately take advantage of, but it will eventually pay dividends, or so I hope. Also, wait a second, we have armor lying around. Right, I should definitely wear that. Excuse me, pardon me. Again, I guess I just wasn't kidding whatsoever when I was saying that this floor is full of adders. Nothing but snakes. Let's switch over to that ring mail. Not getting quite as much AC as we otherwise might like out of it, but of course that's all just par for the course. Glad to hear it. Nice. Definitely glad to have experienced it on our end. It's always so satisfying to get a win in this game, no matter which combination you're playing. Though I will say, on top of that aspect, it is really satisfying to, uh, oh my gosh, come on. There we go. To get a win with a null, or to play a null in general, I should say. They are just one of my favorite species. Huh. Up to seven damage, huh? 45% chance to hit me. I kind of want this last hearing for if I get poisoned by a scorpion or something. But, yeah, never didn't have it. Let's just hop upstairs. Perfect. They hit us, dealt no damage. That's how little we cared about that. Uh, yeah, gnolls are just so much fun. And you have no experience with these guys? They're replacing centaurs? They are indeed, yeah. So they have a lot of similar characteristics in terms of aptitude, slightly modified. I think they're slightly better at spellcasting than centaurs were. But they have, yeah, an interesting roll mechanic that you're able to take advantage of. Auxiliary tail slap, as well as being slightly more defensively minded, just because unlike centaurs, you get to start out with some rugged brown scales, which helps alleviate some of the early game AC issues. A little lucky on that last save, but no, for sure, yeah. But we take those, we definitely take those. Okay, we're still looking at a very distant drain. We're just definitely searching for this timed portal here. There's no guarantee that we'll be able to find our way there. Oh my gosh, especially if we find ourselves all of a sudden encased in a labyrinth here. It's gotta be like bottom, bottom right here. Hello friends, excuse me, pardon me. I have a, a sewer to go find. Oh gosh, where the heck are you? Time to never see a barding old game. <laughs> right, I would hope not, but more than likely to say the least. Oh no, actually no, screw that. Let's manifest our own destiny here, shall we? We're gonna find the, the narding, <laughs> the narding, the barding of the Black Knight. Calling it now. 100%, not a doubt in my mind, guaranteed. Hear the drain falling apart? No, I, I tried game, I tried. Didn't realize how long this hallway was. I thought we had way more eastwards to explore on the map. You son of a gun, how dare you? Don't tease me. Immediately find the sewer as soon as it's no longer relevant, like you do. Black Nart's burning incoming. Yeah, as long as we all believe hard enough, we'll see it. And as long as I don't die to the scorpion. So up to 10 damage poisoning, we do have one curing. So I need to be very careful about where I use it. Also, I'm just realizing now that I've poisoned darts. I probably should have just poisoned this son of a gun. They are susceptible to poisons so that would have helped us through. Not great odds of hitting, I guess, if we quickly check. 
59%? Oh, so that's actually not as bad as I thought either. You son of a... Well, in that case, though, I'm gonna go for the early curing. We did get the shot off on the scorpion, so I'm gonna walk away. Perfect. Never heard doubt in my mind. And there we go. So we did use that final curing in exactly the situation that we were saving it for, so that's kind of nice. But no guarantees the next buddy that we run into coming up here. I'm going to just keep pumping strength. I think we're going to be playing a pretty brute-centered character here. Let's see how it all shakes out. And perfect. Done exploring. So let's head downstairs. Flowing of sand. Another time portal. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me again, game. So we can read some scrolls while we are... Uh, on a new floor here, maybe stumble across magic mapping. Wouldn't that be cool? When you get the distant message very distant, so you try to head in a 45 degree vector from the current position to cut down on the options of the messages. Yeah, my strategy is usually to separate the map into quadrants for sure. And I like hang out in this quadrant, hang in this quadrant. I was just kind of stupid about think where I thought the quadrants were on that last one, which is my bad. But all is well we'll be fine we didn't need that sewer anyway wasn't it so strong early yeah i definitely need to take more advantage out of it at the very least but let's use up all of these identify scrolls right away because why the heck not okay nothing but late game scrolls very cool very cool um so let's pick a direction as to be more ex explicit about what we're doing to uh find our way to the time portal yeah i like to head off towards a corner, at least what I would assume is a corner. <gasps> Natasha, no, I don't, I don't want to hurt you. Okay, this doesn't kill her if we just destroy her body once. That's okay. But don't find me again, because I do not want to kill you. Okay, apparently this is just the floor of uniques. They're all hanging out. There was a big party that I... I have to say, did not get invited to. Don't know what that's about. But apparently, this is just our life now. If Sigmund didn't see us, at least. I can probably take Floor, okay? Not a great situation. I may even want to haste or something here. Seems a bit wild to do so, but... It might be necessary. I'm going to take a couple swings with our axe. See where that gets us. Okay, it was almost to the point where we'd have to make a very tough call. It's of sand nearby. Dang it, I want to heal up, but but I want to want to find it. Maybe up here. This is kind of like a cool setup. Got an ossuary here? No, no. Okay. Alternatively, it could be directly like here, or directly here. So, let's head to the closer one. We should have time, at least with a nearby message. We have narrowed it down a bit more than we otherwise have in the past. Should be a little bit more careful about the first ogre we see, but I'm two eyes on the prize right now. All I care about, all this Palantongus wants, is to get into that ossuary. I don't know if I can see how close you are being blocked, but we have some time if not a lot do we just tank our way through segment Is that all we got like you know this guy's a guaranteed win but if we ever have to reroll and make a wizard harry trotter is right there just saying <laughs> that's fantastic hey even if we do get the win which i mean we are you're right about that uh, there will always be pound toggles in the future, I'm sure, so gotta keep that one in mind. Or Usain Colt, the fastest charger around. Absolutely killing it on the name front today. That is fantastic. Okay, I think I'm gonna do an early haste. Oh, whoops. Meant to do a roll in charge. Early haste into just, let's do this, Sigmund. Let's dance, you and I. Oh no, I'm confused. Oh no. <laughs> I regret. So much regret. No. 
You know what? We just have to go for it, I think. Still confused. Ain't nothing we can do about it. Oh, we could have one more heal wounds? Might. Oh, baby. Okay. Never a doubt in my mind. Um, <laughs> completely slayed. Get out of here, Sigmund. I don't know what the big deal with Sigmund is. People always call him a player killer. I have never understood what they're talking about. It's that easy, folks. <laughs> never worried. Love to hear it. Um, yeah, weirdly enough, this friggin' scorpion scares me more than Sigmund. But, let's get some early poison this time. We have our defensive curl status, and then... When we're walking away, the scorpion at least gets less chances to attack, so that's good. And oh my gosh, I, I want this ossuary so bad, but I'm gonna get myself killed to do it. Would be fitting, I guess. Most of the, the people who make it to the ossuary are dead by default. Quick hiss of sand. How much time do I have? Oh, did I get you? I did. Finally got that tiny little fly. He's done it. He's done it. That's a good omen. Fortuitous. Wow, old skill. Much wow, super cool. You know, I, I try to be humble, but sometimes you just can't can't fake it. Just too good. Super counterintuitive strat that you've never even used is Torment if you're low HP and the enemy's still high. Ooh, that's very cool. Yeah, that would have been the perfect time for it as well. I'll have to keep that in mind, since we do have this early Torment scroll that's just burning a hole in our pocket anyway. Ziggy confuses and goes invisible and can wreck you, or at least me. No, but see, so the strat to get around that is you just, uh... Quaff random potions, happen to get exactly what you need at the given time, and then uh, never roll bad damage against you and roll the absolute killer hit against him. It's that easy. <laughs> never died to the Sigmund ever again. This one simple trick. Okay, sidestepping all the alarms here. There, there have got to be some mummies. They're hiding around one of these corners. I can feel it. And something that I didn't mention in the brief uh, intro to Palantongas, because I didn't actually know it was a thing, is this defensive curl that we have. So that's involved with our tail somehow. I see get good. Oh yes, no, that's the, the layperson's way of phrasing it. But yes, essentially, it's that easy. <laughs> I'm happy to see it because I wasn't quite ready to give up on this Alan Tongus yet. Tongus the Tongus has got to uh, make it at least a little bit further than D4, if I have anything to say about it. But all things considered here, let's just keep it moving. I should actually, I think, switch over to my plate armor. Not very well trained in armor, but you can see that it does give us three more AC, which is a decently big deal at this stage. Hello, Robin. Very cool to see you. Not at all unhappy about that. Well... Hmm. We could just run away, head upstairs, reset for another day here. What I'm quickly taking a peek for is against Robin in particular, if you can find like a cool little switchback hallway where Robin doesn't have the sight range to toss a goblin behind you. And it's not quite as brutal of a fight as it usually is, but we will take advantage of stair dancing, of course. Try and narrow these buddies down, and that's perfect. Ooh, can I wear helmets? I can. Oh, yes, and that's a sick looking helmet. Is that four uniques on this floor? Right? I kind of forgot about Natasha, but that's exactly it. Oh, hey, Natasha. I wasn't just talking about you or anything. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Okay, let's just leave. We don't want to kill her again. For any of you who haven't been present for the last few runs where we have run into Natasha, she's just a, an innocent cat looking for her owner. It would just be wrong for a giant armor-plated Palantonga 
to destroy her. So, we have to try our best to keep her alive against her own best wishes. Oh gosh, against our own best wishes too. Did I mention that part? But nothing's waiting for us at the bottom of these stairs, and I believe in my moral compass strong enough. Gosh darn it. Well. Hmm. How do I want to handle this one? We could head back up. Probably escape Natasha. But this is a bit of a rough encounter. 34% chance to evade, up to 15 damage. Iguanas hit pretty freaking hard for what they are. We have, oh, an amulet of reflection, I guess. So we could hope that the centaur destroys themselves. But on the other side of things, we're slowed right now, which is kind of brutal. Might have to fight Natasha one more time. I think I can kill her twice, right? Or I guess to make sure that we're using clear nomenclature, destroy her body, because I'm trying not to kill her. That was one of those get good strats. Yeah, it's get good, but in the totally opposite way of the usual, where we're talking about good in a morality sense, just get good. It's that easy. Because you shouldn't kill cats that are just trying to find their way home. It's a bit of a power dynamic that I try my best not to take advantage of. But, again, I think I can destroy her. Yeah, as pathetically as she dies, her spirit has not been put to rest, is how I'm taking that. Right? Please, game, please tell me Natasha's still alive. I'm so sorry. I didn't want to do it. She's alive. She's coming for us. She's gonna get us, but she's alive. Oh, thank god she's alive. Oh, happy day. But I'm gonna use haste to, uh, gain some ground. Then... Hmm. I should just leave, I think. Might just have to leave this iguana alive, too. I'm being completely honest. Um, this one. That's the one. Yeah, I think that iguana is also going to get the benefit of getting to stay alive. Maybe let's frame it as uh, iguana can just keep Natasha company for the rest of their existences in the dungeon together. That'd be nice. 